Hello, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. This is going to be our, our weekly, which is not happening quite weekly, but I'm doing the best I can, our frequent rug review. So after the, I think this is going to be the third or the fourth one that I've done, um, looking at some of the rugs that came up over the last week or so over the social media outlets, um, the different Facebook pages where people post their work, ongoing work, new work, new patterns, original stuff. Um, super exciting. So much work comes up every day and it's super exciting. So I'd like to spend a little time each week um, looking at some of the rugs that caught my eye. If you have something that you'd like me to look at on here with the group, of course, I always, always give nice reviews about things and say positive reviews about things because everything I see is beautiful. Um, so there's, there's no, there's no otherwise, but I'm going to do about maybe six or eight rugs tonight and look at some of the sources, the places where they came from it, and not just the rugs themselves and the maker of the rug, the hooker of the rug, but also the pattern makers and where you can find supplies. So we're kind of embellishing this whole um, project to show you some extra stuff, not just the rugs themselves. So let's get started. Okay, I think I am sharing my screen. This is going to be our first rug for the uh, for the night. Uh, please forgive the pop-ups I get. I have to keep the computer online during us looking at all these different tabs um, so I can move from website to website and some of it has to be live. So just forgive all the crazy pop-ups I sometimes get. This is our first rug. I absolutely love this rug. I've seen it's just the beginning and you know how I like to start with a beginning at the beginning of the show. So this was posted in the Contemporary Rug Hooking Group by Wendy Justin Cockrell. And I love this pattern. Wendy, I love this pattern. Um, this is a Pris Butler pattern, and I am a bit obsessed with Pris Butler. Uh, she's just such a um, interesting pattern maker. She's so interested in design and composition that I I know sometimes a pattern of hers before I read it because the compositions are so strong. There's so many motifs going on. Now, this one is called The Quilters. And you can see there's like the little pumpkin patch. Wendy's already evolving the little pumpkin patch. It is so festive for this time of year. This is a classic composition. What is not to love here? This is so country, so folk, little bit of Grandma Moses, um, like a modern Courier and Ives. It's just a beautiful composition. If you look, Pris Butler has written a lot about rug hooking as well. Um, and she, she has spoken quite a bit about the breakdown of a composition because whether you're talking about rug hooking or painting or any kind of art music composition matters and sometimes you get away with not having a fantastic composition because you compensate in other ways uh, with color or some kind of new uniqueness with this pattern uh, this is so solid this is what's called an s pattern and if you look at it you can dissect patterns and put them into certain categories um, so that you know in your head interesting curious this is why it's successful because it's an s pattern so when you're when you're looking at it you see that the action happens in these places up on the hilltop with the sheep over at the house there's a cat on the roof it, your eye goes right over to the tree where there's two chickens and then you come to the central motif which is the quilters that it's named for you come to the pumpkins and then you come back down to the woman sitting a ways away from the table with two more chickens your eye just goes from one thing to the next. And it really is um, the S, right? If you're seeing where all the motifs are, the field of sunflowers right after the house, it really brings your eye down. And it's extra stuff too, like the sheep on the hill. It's like a fair, it's like a nursery rhyme up there. Then the little cottage, everybody wants to live in this exact house. And then it brings you out to the sunflower fields and then it brings you down to an apple tree it's not like this tree or the other trees this is an apple tree so this is something different again and over to the quilters which is the central motif composition matters it matters a lot i love this wendy i can't wait to see the way that this evolves this is such a great piece i've seen this pattern so many times but i can't remember if i've ever seen it done so i'm really going to have my eye on the contemporary rug hooking group to see if wendy posts um posts a bit more of this I'm so curious to see how the rest of it uh, is going to fill in. It's a beautiful pattern. You're off to a great start. So this is our second rug, also in the Contemporary Rug Hooking Group. And this is by Given Campbell. I love your name, by the way. That is so super charming. Um, she says, all done. So we know that sentiment. This is, this is a great rug. And 
wait till you see what else she has for us in this post. Uh, this is what's called a sugar skull. So I'm seeing more and more uh, sugar skull comp uh, compositions now because, of course, we are right on the brink of the holidays and Halloween. And these um, sugar skulls relate to the Day of the Dead celebration. So this is so cool to see these coming to be. They have such a tattoo quality. This one is so colorful. And look at the way that it's hooked. Somebody wrote in the post, I really like the texture of your background. I see diamond shapes that are that really add dimension. Nice job. And yes, how did you get such great curved lines, especially around the chin and the top of the head? Again, nice work. So you can see the diamonds now, right? If you didn't immediately see them, you're seeing them now. And given answers by saying, usually I just work straight. And once the design begins to curve, I follow the diagonal punches um, with diagonal punches. So she, if you've ever done needle point, not needlework, but needle point, you know there is a pattern uh, to doing it that is important to get a certain look, to get the straight canvas and not have it pulling on the bias. This is the kind of thing that Given is doing here. She's being really thoughtful about filling in the background. This is not willy-nilly times. This is really thoughtful. You can see even in the eyes, there's a lot of texture and movement in the eyes. Um, and it looks like there's finer yarn being used in the skull itself. And of course, finer yarn, the black, the filigree lines, the diamond on the forehead. This is just a gorgeous um, composition. My favorite thing about it, well, I love the flower on the chin. I love the background, but I love the choice with these flowers around the border, them being kind of a rusty marigold color and then outlined in a blue that's a little different than the background blue. I love it when things almost match. You know, it it adds so much interest. You can, you can do matchy match to the background and it works, but this is even better. It's a little bit warmer and it, it's really the same kind of tonal value as the rest of the flower. It's doing a lot for the composition, having that blue just... That one thing, having that blue and the flowers on the border, it's doing a lot for the composi composition. I love the flower on the chin being kind of an indigo purple. It's unexpected. You expect it to be black and you look and it's not. And again, adding interest. These sugar skulls are so neat. I'm just getting into them now because if you watch my Coffee Time show, the live feed from 1130 to 12 on Ribbon Candy Hooking, I've been doing a series of sugar skull pumpkins, not skulls, but pumpkins. Um, with wacky designs, tattooy designs and stuff. And I'm starting to get into it because I started reading about the Day of the Dead and the whole celebration and the idea of sugar skulls because I honestly, I was living in Europe for so long, it doesn't come up as much there. And, you know, I, I recognize them by sight, but I didn't know a lot about the tradition. And um, so I was reading about it. And apparently this has been going on for hundreds of years. It's a celebration of the dead, like in, in one's family. So there are tons of traditional methods for making these sugar skulls. They're actually little candies, sometimes not, sometimes not edible, but the original idea was that they were little candies made of sugar and you would use a mold to make them. So I'm guessing people buy molds, pass molds down in families. This has been going on, the, the practice of using and producing the little skulls since the 1630s. Um, and the, the edible ones, of course, people can eat and or put on an altar, like our equivalent of a mantle. You'd put them on the altar and that's called the calaveras, I think. Um, no, the calaveras is the, is the skull. Um, the altar is the ofrendas. I don't speak Spanish, I'm sorry. Um, but they would have both large and small skulls. Sadly, the, the small skulls always signify like a child, God forbid, don't even wanna think about that. Um, but you know, there is a skull for each family member who's passed and the family decorates it and puts it up on this altar. And the idea is that the departed will return home to enjoy this beautiful offering of these beautiful, colorful, animated looking skulls. And it really is a wonderful tribute. It's such, it's such a nice idea. So let me scroll down a little bit while the dog scratches a hole through the door to get to me. Let me scroll down because I was going back and forth a little bit with Given and she was telling me more about her stuffy stuffies, all these faces, and yeah, and I asked her for some more some more info. She gave me some more detail here. If you look at the close-up of the punching, it's pretty remarkable how good this is. So this, I mean, look at the outlining of, uh, this is this is really well done. I've been doing a lot of teaching lately on Zoom, and people always say, what's, what's easier, hooking or punch? I've heard punch is super easy. Well, nothing is super easy until you really develop a knack for it, and this is obviously like the very high end 
of punching. This is perfection. I mean, this is, this is amazing. You can get there. Anybody can get there, right? Lots of practice. Um, but this isn't your, this isn't your first punch job kind of a deal. Given has a website. Um, I hope I put that down in here. Let me see. Yes. www.givencampbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L, just like you think, dot com. So, um, have, have a look at that because her work, she's going to try to sell these, I think, from what I understood, make them as pillow kits. I'm not sure if they're available yet, but um, there it is, givencampbell.com. And then look at, she did this one next. You see this one with the hearts? Like there's a rose coming out of his forehead and it's surrounded by hearts. It's like a Valentine, Valentine uh, sugar skull and keyhole eyes. And this is the one she's working on tonight as we record. She's working on this like right now. Um, beautiful one with the skull of the diamond on the head, the skull, and it says notorious. So cool. Given these are so cool. So make sure if you want to check out the sugar skulls, go to givencampbell.com and see what she's got going there. Keep a keep an eye on the contemporary rug hooking group also for her posts because you can see she's got a lot more in the pipeline. So the next drug of the night is by Lin, uh, sorry, Lisa Eastman in the Wooly Rug Hooking, so Wooly Mason Jar Rug Hooking. Did that change its name or am I losing my mind? The Wooly Mason Jar Rug Hooking. Maybe I'm losing my mind. It seems like it's reading different than in the past. But Lisa writes, look at these, look at these things. I guess these are mug rugs. She writes, I'm hooked on these cute little fangs. And everybody agreed. These are super cute little fangs. Um, you, can, you don't say coasters anymore, right? You use them for mugs if you're civilized. Now, I would use that for a beer bottle or a glass of wine, but that would be okay. I don't think I would need a special permit for that. Um, they're so beautiful and versatile. And she was so generous in this post about sharing what she knew. So this was a really popular post. I want to point out around the edges of these mug rugs, this is not like tasseling. These, This is proddy. So proddy I'll talk about a little bit later, but it's when you pull an already cut shaped piece through your backing, the same way that you would hook. And it's shaped, and as you pull it in, the two sides, however you've cut the shape, usually leafy type patterns, the two sides pop up. So she would have probably finished the borders of these and then prodded just around the edge, and you get something that is way better than a tassel finish. It looks almost like a seashell, you know? If you're looking at like this white one, it looks like something you would find on an exotic shore somewhere. But Lisa, what I love about this, this post, you, these are gorgeous. These are insanely gorgeous. But somebody wrote in the comments that they were very interested and do you have a pattern that I could buy from you? And Lisa was so nice in this post. I always, always like to commend people for being so decent. She says, she, she responds by saying, I'll give it to you for free. And she writes in this post how she did this. I mean, this is like, this is more than forthcoming. This is kind. This is paying it forward. This is great karma. So I'm going to just read it quickly here, but you can pause this video or go back to it or find this post in the Willie Mason Jar Rug Hooking Group um, because this is really above and beyond. So she says, I'll give it to you for free. Using a large coffee cup, turn it upside down and mark the outside to have a perfect circle. Pick colors you love. I used a number five cut. Mix it up using two pieces of wool uh, during a run of hooking to give it the candy cane look. So that's how she's getting like one color after another after another. You see this kind of patterning? That's always, you know, I always wondered um, honestly how you did that. So I'm really happy to know. I always thought it was like the thing was already pre-dyed to do that or something. Um, so she says, to give it the candy cane look, cut proddy leaves about two inches long by three quarters to one inch wide. Snippity snip the ends to a point. Use a small needle, no, small needle nose pliers. And she says, I use small surgical chest. She's a nurse. And another woman commented that she's also a nurse and she had the same tools, which is so funny. That's why I love these groups. But she says she used pliers to pull the tip of the petal up from the backside. I pull the next petal up through the same hole as the one before to make them full. So this is so detailed. If you wanted to do this using Lisa's description, you could do this. I mean, the, I, you know, it, it would be hard to say if I were trying to do this, I don't think my candy cane effect would be as beautiful as this is. Um, but I would be willing to try it a hundred times just to practice because these really, you know, when you're looking for something and you have rugs on the floor and you have rugs on the walls, this is something so nice and extra. 
And with the holidays coming, you know, stocking stuff, small gifts, hostess gifts, people will still be getting together for the holidays, of course, despite everything. What a lovely thing to give, a, a little set of, of mug rugs, right? This is so nice, Lisa. I love it. Thank you for letting me share this. So the next one is, sorry about the notices. I just, again, I have to keep it on or it's, I'm going to trip myself up later. This was also in the Woolly Mason Jar page, Christine Landry. This is interesting. This is so interesting. I, I'm not going to get myself all worked up and scary, but this is, this is what I love the most. So I, I don't, I don't mean one pattern more than another. I love everybody's pattern, but what I love the most is talking about these old patterns. Christine writes, old blue nose pattern. I bought it at an auction and it's just called, sadly, how sad is this? BN-43. That's like cry yourself to sleep sad. I mean, look at this pattern and it's called BN-43. That is horrible. There's, there's not a word in, in any language for this. This is gorgeous. This should be called something amazing. We should make up a name for this and fix this thing. But I love this rug. And Christine wrote, I was hoping to find a picture of one that had been hooked, uh, but no luck. So I basically just invented the bushes and the trees. What? You invented the bushes and the trees? This is like, did you or did Chagall? Because you are channeling like am amazing color, form, design, shading. This is unbelievable. This is, I love pointillism. This is better than any pointless painting I've ever seen. The bushes and the trees particularly the part that you did, Christine, is the best part. This is unbelievable. And this thread is really interesting when you scroll down and look at it because somebody wrote, um, oh, I have one my grandmother hooked during the Second World War. Not quite like yours, but close. I know it's a blue nose. I've spent quite a bit of time trying to identify the patterns that she hooked in the 30s and 40s. And then she added, I like your sky. Yeah. Look at the sky. Look at that little plume of smoke coming out of the chimney. This is just over the top. Look at the house. I love the unevenness of the windows, the suggestion of the, um, um, not shingling, but like clapboarding. Um, I mean, it's just, again, the trees and the bushes. The movement, right? This is, this is just beyond. The movement of that path leading your eye up and into, talk about composition, up and toward the house. Um, it's just amazing. Christine, this is so good. I gotta let this dog in. He's gonna drive me nuts. Get in here, Buttons. All right. It's This composition is just over the top. It looks like there's so much fruit and flower activity on the trees, and then the trees in the background have more of a skeletal look. There's a big fat cloud right above the house. It's so beautiful. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Uh, you deserve all the great comments you get on this. It's just crazy. Someone else wrote, I bought a version of this rug at a neighbor's yard sale. Um, it's faded with repairs on the binding, but it still makes a warm spot at the side of the bed. It's fun to know where the pattern originated. And she spelt neighbors with the U, like the British spelling, which maybe she's in Britain and maybe this pattern was in Britain. That's really cool too. Um, Christine, I just, I just love this. I love this so much. So I wanna show you this, blue nose patterns. Check out this blog. Mary Jane's Rugs. Subscribe to this if you can. I love, I love this. This was put out on September 20th, 2015. Now let's check this out together. Um, this is a blog. This, this particular entry is about blue nose patterns. So she's saying, we learned a lot about the historic blue nose rug patterns on our trip to Nova Scotia. There are several hundred patterns that were produced, mostly as color stencil designs by the Garrett Company of New Gla uh, Glasgow, Nova Scotia. They were sold throughout the 1900s across North America and Britain. So that makes sense with the neighbor's yard sale, right? So these are some of the designs that you're seeing. Here are two old advertisements of the Garrett Company. Again, this is Mary Jane's Rugs, the blog. Now, this is the part that becomes interesting. She says, the only reason these patterns still exist is because a woman named Linda McDonald bought them in 1998 and took them out of the Garrett's basement in which they'd been sitting folded up and covered with dirt and grime for years and years. She's done a heroic job. That's British too with the end. So this must be a British blog, a heroic job of cleaning and saving the patterns one by one. Some were saved from stencil patterns on burlap. Many were just very fragile paper patterns and it was tricky to clean them up since the colors on the burlap were not color fast. Here's a photo of one pattern cleaned up, but you can see it's embedded with dirt that remains where it's been folded for years. So 
Sure, sure enough, the dirt is there. But my word, Linda McDonald, I have got to Google you. This is crazy. This is so much work. This And this is heroic indeed. Linda owns the Rags to Rugs shop in Peak 2, Nova Scotia, and offers these antique patterns both in her shop and online. So as soon as this video is over, let's all of us look for Rags to Rugs, Nova Scotia, and see if we can find these. I didn't have time before I started recording. I dropped the ball. Um, but here's the link right here, www.rag, you know what, let's do it, rags to rugs. Uh, it doesn't seem to be there. So you know what that means? We're not going to give up. I'm going to find out more about this and we're going to be talking about it in coffee time um, because after Linda put this much work in, we can't drop the ball. This is an amazing blog and obviously the blue nose patterns are amazing. I also want to say if you are a blue nose fan, follower, searcher, admirer, um, and you are struggling with the name of a pattern or finding a pattern. I happen to be at Margaret's shop uh, the other day in, um, I think it was Northampton, Mass. Um, I'm going to have to put this in the comments. I think it was uh, Mill River Rugs. I should have this right at the front of my brain because she was the loveliest woman. I did a video tour of her shop there. But in the shop, she had the Blue Nose catalog, like the comprehensive catalog. So I'll put a thing in the comments uh, if I'm wrong about the name of her shop. But she is such a lovely woman, and I'm sure she would be delighted if you're looking for something specifically on Blue Nose to open that catalog and help you out. That's the only place I've seen that catalog, and I have a search in for it on eBay, and I have for a long time, and it just doesn't come up. So you know you can follow up with this rags to rugs, see what happens here, but also check with Margaret. To be continued on that, okay? So on to our next rug. There we go, that scared me. Okay, so here comes some craziness. Here comes some universe at work stuff. I just died when I saw this. Contemporary rug hooking group, Kathy Hopper. Kathy I'm just beyond. I sent you a crazy email today and I probably scared you off. I went nuts when I saw this. So she posted this on September 1st, just finished the other day, Swirly Flowers. You know how much I like primitives. If you know me, you know how I do videos and little tutorials on folding stuff in half and creating vases and um, primitive patterns. And I like to talk and read and write and speak about primitive patterns like uh, of an age. This is the most awesomely successful, colorful, electric, alive, primitive pattern I've ever seen. I've just never imagined anything like this. It makes me feel like I have been fooling around for a long time. I, I just, I can't, you are such an artist, and I know that already by looking at your page and stalking a little bit, but you are such an artist. This is like, this is like primitive, you know, super folky meets fireworks. The colors are insane. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? It's it's so good. It's so loose. You know, it still has that primitive feel, but it's so loose and it's so colorful. Somebody wrote in the comments, I absolutely love this rustic, funky rug. I'm so inspired. And I feel the same way. I'm so inspired. It's so different. Some of the flowers look like little suns or pineapples. They're so strangely shaped. The colors are completely spacey and unnatural and gorgeous and perfect. Um, if I if I owned this rug, it would be like I would move it from room to room as I went and just keep it next to me all the time because I love it so much. So I got really excited when I saw Kathy's, obviously, rug here to the point of, you know, not being well. And um, I, I got doubly excited because I realized, now here's the universe being silly, I realized that the other weekend when I had to go to Watch Hill in Rhode Island to um, appear in court to pay a parking ticket because I was fighting it and I ended up making a deal and paying half and that was fine because it was just such a stupid setup. But anyway, I was in Watch Hill and it was not a great day. And I went into an antique store uh, once I resolved the problem of the stupid ticket. And the woman who ran the antique store right on the main street in Watch Hill, it's actually Westerly at that point um, in Rhode Island, she, I bought some rug hooking stuff and she said, oh, you know, my niece, um, I think it was niece. I don't think it was cousin. I think it was niece rug hooks and lives, I want to say like more Northern uh, New England. Oh, maybe you know her. And I, yeah, the, you know, so rug hooking is a big world. I probably don't. And she pulled up a profile on Facebook and it was Kathy's. It, I didn't get that until tonight, like an hour ago. 
and she scrolled down being a friend already of being a family member and I saw the most beautiful paintings and hooked rugs that I think I've ever seen. And Kathy, they were yours. And it was such a crazy moment because when I was putting this video together, I looked at the painting that you're using as your profile picture. And I realized it was the painting that I have a screenshot of on my phone to get in touch with you, to look at your rugs and see if you can post some more of them because I was super interested in looking at them. Um, so again, universe, thank you. And Kathy, thank you for like, I think my favorite rug of all time. Hold your breath because there's more coming. So as it happened, I had bookmarked another rugs of another rug of Kathy's like from the week or no, a little bit earlier um, because I'm so behind. But this is Kathy's. So the other rug, the primitive rug, rug was her own design. She's an artist, obviously, super artist. This is her own design as well. And she captions it. This is again in the contemporary rug hooking group, Kathy Hopper, Kathy with an eye, starting a new rug, Frida's Wall of Flowers. And this is, this is, this is crazy. This is like amazingly beautiful. I can't wait to see how this evolves. Um, hey there, I built your wall of flowers. Love Frida. It's super funny. It's now, um, it makes a statement. It's also beautiful and it's totally in the vein of Frida Kahlo. I just think that this rug is amazing. This got a lot of comments, well-deserved, and um, I can't wait to see it as it evolves, but this is a great composition. This is, I, I, I can imagine how colorful and fun this is going to be. I absolutely love it. Um, please take lots of photos as you go. And I love Frida Kahlo. I love the story of her life. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I have to show you something silly, um, especially if you know me. You know how much I talk about my daughter, Jocelyn, who's six, and um, she does a lot of videos with me. She's a little rug hooker. She's a little firefly. She's a little nut. But when she was not even one yet, we had a massive Halloween party in the Netherlands. I threw like the biggest Halloween party because they don't really celebrate Halloween. They celebrate St. Martin's Day. But um, I had a massive party and I dressed Jocelyn up as Frida Kahlo. So are you ready for this? I probably shouldn't even show this. I mean, maybe I should have been arrested because this is like an infant walking with a Frida Kahlo dress on that I made her out of cave facet. Um fabrics and yeah I mean this is crazy maybe she was one but I have a huge flower in her not hair hair put some apples around her this is this beautiful place um, outside Amsterdam where we had this party but did you notice how I it connected her eyebrows that isn't natural she looked so um, precious so obviously I have a huge love for Frida Kahlo I shouldn't click forward because there might be okay there's Teddy dressed as a painter but um, I love Frida Kahlo, I love the rug, and I can't wait to see more. So thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks for letting me use that. So next rug, another one that stopped my heart. Again, Contemporary Rug Hooking Group. Um, this was put up by Trisha Miller. Oh, Trisha, again, I, you know, I'm only choosing rugs that I really love, that really speak to me. Um, all of these on this episode really are just killing me. I love, I just love this. This is this design is called Autumn Memories, and she writes, wanted to use odds and ends and found this pattern of Lynn Wells. It was fun to hook, and besides the pattern, I bought nothing. Very satisfying. And that is very satisfying when you have lots of bits left over. You know, when I think about scrap rugs, I, th I think about the more conventional ones, and I don't always like them. This I love. I would never... Um, as much as I fancy myself a designer and an artist, I could never think of this. This is so different. It's like a patchwork, maybe field, maybe just shape. And the way that it's flanked with different leaves and acorns and pine cones. And they're, Trisha, the way that you've hooked it is the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's all multicolored and crazy and you used your scraps. Um, the squirrels, like the top, bottom and left hand side, I mean, it's crazy. It also reminds me of pieces of pie somehow and the little filigree branches and berries that are coming off. This, this is, this is like my favorite scrap quilt I've ever seen. I absolutely love it. I love the design, but I love what you did with it. It's hooked beautifully. It's super primitive and folky, but it's so contemporary too. You put it in a great group. Um, the colors are just amazing. This is why I don't feel the need to quilt anymore because I can see this kind of um, assembly of colors coming together with doing hooking and without having to schlep a 3,000 pound machine around. 
I just love this so much. You did this so beautifully. The the squirrels have little uh, accents on their noses and bellies and under the tails. There's just the right amount of shading for a primitive piece. I love how there's little bits of like yellow that stand out in places and how there's some directional hooking going on. So much interest. I can tell by the whip stitching too that you're either using a color changing yarn or that you're using wool strips and changing constantly because it's also a colorful binding. Um, it feels so good to use, use stuff up. And I mean, this could not be any more successful. This is this is perfect. If you had had to buy everything and pay, you know, through the nose for everything, it would still be worth it because it's that beautiful. But I want to share this designer with you a little bit because this is Trisha. The way that this looks is Trisha. If you know, I, I could buy this uh, pattern and be real disappointed with the way it came out. Trisha did this pattern to look like this, but um, the designer is amazing. And her patterns are available on the website, I'm sure you know, called the love, uh, I love rug And this is her page. This is Lynn's Primitive by Design page. So you can see that her patterns, you know, if you're thinking of the squirrels and stuff, she's big with borders and she's big with animals. And the animals are very naive and loose in a, an expert way, right? She's got some primitive stuff, but... Um, she's got a lot of very loose looking characters here. This is Autumn Memories. Um, so she sells it in different sizes. I, I'm, I guess I can click on it. Is that going to kill the, I'm always afraid the computer's going to start smoking. Um, so this is the way it's hooked on the page. I love it, Patricia. I love yours. I love yours. This is so nice. This, this has like a, a map quality to me, like a, like a, like a map map, like a globe map. Um, there's great shading in this too, in the berries and stuff, but Trisha, I love yours. Um, but you can see how they can be so different from one to the next. This one's much more earthy colors, much more autumn colors. They're both great because it's a great composition. So if you're interested in this rug and you think that you're interested in this um, designer, go to I Love Rug Hooking because there's a lot of artists on this site um, and you can go directly to her page and buy Autumn Memories if you love it as much as I love it. So here is the next one. I love this one too. We're getting so into autumn now. This was posted on Sharing the Love of Rug Hooking, um, posted by Michelle Scott Robinson. This is so sweet. There is so much to be said about this too. It's such a simple pattern. There is something so whimsical about Halloween. I think part, you know, part of it is the scare, scare stuff. And that's the part I don't like, the bloody stuff, the uh, macabre stuff, Edgar Allan Poe kind of thing, Lovecraft, I end there. Stuff that's over the top is not for me, like walking through the woods and, and one of the scenes is like a surgery room. That's what happened at Girl Scouts last year. That's not for me and that's not for the kids. Um, I like the part of Halloween that looks just like this. This pattern is by Winter Cottage Studios and it's called Jack's Crow. Super whimsical. Pumpkins coming alive, pumpkin people, the crow being treated like a dog. Um, just the simpleness of it, the scarecrow quality of it, the starkness of it. It's colorful. It's fun. It's, it really speaks of the season and childhood. The thing about Halloween that, you know, people love is I think to be able to connect to childhood again and the excitement and energy of that night. Um, I think that's why people love to work on Halloween patterns because it brings you back there and not a lot of things do, especially these days. But this is just beautiful, Michelle. You got a lot of well-deserved compliments. You did some beautiful hooking in this. I love the way that you have outlined the star and the moon. I love the way that you've handled the background. Michelle got a ton of um, comments about the background. The sky is just so well done, the dark and the light blue. And somebody wrote, um, what is your blue in the background? Because honestly, that's the thing that got me too. I thought, wow, those colors are close together, but not exact so nice again when things are close together but not exact um, it adds so much interest it's an easy trick and she was nice enough to respond by saying it's this i think i found it it might not be exactly the same but she responded by saying it's this reversible in other words two-sided wool and i found this one on etsy that really looks like it uh, it says corduroy blue reversible 100 percent wool i think that might be it because oop spoiler alert um, in the comments, somebody asks about it and I can't remember where. Oh, maybe here. Picked out my colors. No, nope. but 
But anyway, she posted a photo of it, maybe this one, yep, the background, and it looks like the one I just pulled up, I think, that corduroy one on Etsy. She says she thinks it's called Ellen Blue. I, I don't think it is. Pull up Etsy um, reversible um, wool, and this will come up right away. But it came out so pretty. It's such a whimsical pattern. Um, Wintage, oh, Wintage, Winter Cottage Studios is another great pattern maker. So this is their Etsy page. Dog is back. I'm going to kill him. Uh, this is their Etsy page. So take a look at this too. Winter Cottage Studio. Lots of beautiful primitive designs. Now here is Jack's Crow. It's here on the bench and this one as part of a vignette. But this is it here. And you can see it's much grayer. I mean, you get like a greenish ground. The thing that pops in this uh, little um, example is the, is the red collar. But it's more ghostly than the way that we just saw it hooked. Um, so they're all beautiful. I love the design. I love the way that it's hooked. You did a beautiful job. Um, thank you for sharing. These, these patterns are so classic primitive. If you love classic primitive, check out Winter Cottage Studio on Etsy. You will not be disappointed. So here we go. I did a little spoiler and now I'm back. Um, this is going to be, I think, our last rug for the night, but I have a couple other things to, no, one more rug after this, actually. Um, I have a couple things to show you. Uh, after this because this brings up a lot of questions. Karen, this is gorgeous. Karen posted this on her own page. Um, I think we must be friends because I saw it and I immediately favorited it and wrote because I love Halloween but I also love Christmas and this just speaks to me in so many ways. It's such a nice basket. The pine cones, the holly berries, the, uh, the leaves, and the bluebird. I mean so unexpected it's so sweet it reminds me of like the 12 days of christmas it reminds me of a hundred different beautiful christmas songs and the thing about this is the prati right prati again is when you pull pieces through that you've already pre-shaped and snipped um, and you pull them through and two big floppy pieces come through moth got them and you end up with big floppy leaves like this now with a poinsettia composition like this to have different colors the way that you do is key this adds so much more interest if you could picture those flowers in the front being darker like the others it would be way less interesting this is amazing i'm a huge fan of a little bit of pink at christmas i think it really pops red and green it's a very mid-century vintage palette um, it really pops and the way that you're hooking the basket is beautiful you're done the basket so your your comment here was i hope i get this finished before christmas i I think I think you will. I think you certainly will. It's absolutely beautiful. And Karen was kind enough to share. This is a Chris Miller design, so I'll do that in a minute. She was kind enough to share another thing that she's just finished. I mean, this is like, whoa. I've never seen anything like this, too. I'm guessing, Karen, that you're a winter person the way that I'm a, ha a Halloween person because you have two beautiful winter holiday type compositions, cardinals, bluebirds. This is so gorgeous. Um, I love this one, too. But the, the poinsettia one is a design by Chris Miller. You can see it in the picture. And Chris Miller is uh, Spruce Ridge Studios. So let me show you her information in case you're interested in shopping there. Spruce Ridge Studios. Um, and again, this is uh, Chris Miller. I, I hope I just said that. I hope I, I'm, I hope I'm not crossing Karen and Chris because I've got two Ks and I'm, and I'm tired. Um, Chris Miller is Spruce Ridge Studios. And you can see she's got a beautiful page, accessories, fabric, kits, patterns. Um, so you'll be able to find anything primitive that you're looking for here. We can click on her patterns, Spruce Ridge Studios. Let's look at her own patterns, and you're going to have a beautiful uh, selection of designs. There's many artists under this umbrella, too. So you can have a lot of fun here. You can go down the rabbit hole and have a lot of fun. Now, Prati is something we talked about twice in this episode. Um, and I can describe it to you by telling you you cut something into a shape and you pull it through and it has two floppy edges. I can say that a thousand times, but until you see a photo tutorial or try it yourself, um, it's not going to make any sense. So I really recommend, you know I love Haley at Loop by Loop Studio in Warren, Rhode Island. She did this tutorial in uh, 2018 about making a Prati flower pin. And I looked at these pins um, when I did a tour of her store a couple weeks ago. But she shows you a blow by blow, the shapes that you need to do that you would then pull through the way that you would hook anything um, and how to make the whole flower. So she's giving you a really in-depth tutorial. Again, this is, if you look up here, loop 
buyloopstudio.com. Haley sells all kinds of things, but this is a really handy proddy tutorial. Never said that sentence before. You can see it has a hooked center. It's just done beautiful petals around the edges. Um, so if you're looking to start doing proddy, um, check out Loop by Loop Studio and check out that tutorial. I just added this one a minute ago because I got permission to use it. Oh, another heart stopping one here. Barb Viscomi, I'm sorry if I killed that, um, gave me permission to use this that she put up in Students of Visions of You. This is a great group. If you don't belong to it, join. It's a really fun group. And she wrote, finished my autumn watchers designed by Alita Akers. So there's a lot to be said about this. Um, holy mackerel. What a composition. Your colors are amazing. Um, this is so sort of, I, I don't want to say Maxfield Parish because it's, it's better than that. Um, this has such a 1920s storybook feel for me, and the artist is not uh, from that era. It's like a contemporary artist that does these. Cushing in Maine, uh, Cushing, C-U-S-H-I-N-G, carries all of Alita's uh, patterns or all the ones that are available, and you get a lot of the storybook quality. You can see those sweet 1920s houses with a little smoke rising. The branches of the tree, I love the way you hooked the branches of the tree. You could have gone whole hog crazy and made them dark like the branch on top, but the branches that the crows are sitting on, or ravens, um, are understated. And it may, it really brings your eye to the moon into the center of the composition. And again, talking of compositions, you've got a lot of horizontal movement, but then that giant circle in the middle that's broken by the main motif, which is the, the crows. And it's like an afterthought when your eye travels down the central crow's body to the winding road and toward the storybook village. I mean, the way that it's outlined also has a Tiffany stained glass quality, but very 1920s quality. You can take a pattern like this that you have to be, you know, a, a master to hook it this well. Doesn't mean don't try. Absolutely, absolutely try. Even if it's your first rug, give it a try. But what I'm saying is this is gorgeous. You did this beautifully. Look at those bushes. Look at the choices of colors uh, in the fields beyond, like olive, um, um, like a khaki drab, rust colors, lime green. So unexpected. And then like a periwinkle hill in the distance. And usually when you get periwinkle type hills, you get like a Western feel, but not with this. The clouds cutting into the moon and the very dead leaves give it that late autumn feel. Um, the little plume of smoke as well gives it like a time of year and a place, a place on the map, a place in the year. It's just a feel good piece. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well done. I love it. Barb, um, posted in Students of Visions of You. Um, so join this group and look for pieces like this because I didn't see this anywhere else. This is just gorgeous. So Barb, I love it. Thank you for letting me share that. I just want to show you um, Alita Aker's uh, bio here. On, she's got stuff all over the internet and certainly all over Cushing. But I just want to show you Daily Paintworks um, is like a blog space. It's a big uh, website. It's a big inspirational website for painters and people who love uh, any visual arts. Um, and they do like um, little spotlights on people from time to time. So this one was done in December of 2012 and they covered Alita Akers and they showed, these are all watercolors that her work is based on. And they do a little bit about her life, about her fine art background and how when she was even younger, she talks about being a child at elementary school. And even though she was very rural, she actually had an art teacher. So she was able to develop uh, her skills and, and um, her last sentence is so cute. The activities were far less complicated than art instruction these days, but it lit a tiny creative candle. And that's just what you hope for your little ones your grandkids, your kids, is that their tiny little candles are lit and just keep shining. So she got the right teacher at the right time. Um, and this is what happened. She ends up having this unreal career of doing illustrative uh, watercolors and paintings that you see all over the place. And luckily Cushing um, has obviously licensed them for rug hooking because 
the colors are beautiful. All of those storybook cottages and things are Alita's. Uh, this is this is uh, an interview with her, but here's another one of her original paintings, um, Persimmons Caught in the Snow, and again, the storybook cottage in the distance. You know, the thing about her painting is like, it looks like an English village, but there's such rugged landscapes around. It really, it looks a, a bit more fairy tale, not just the colors and um, the compositions, but just the where, where is this? It's it's a magical place that, you know, you, you go to in art, you go to in your imagination and your dreams, but she's super diverse. As you can see from this page, she's definitely worth checking out. Um, these are less storybook pairs on vintage linen, but this is a great, this is a classic storybook of hers. This is a great um, page to read about her. What makes you happiest about your work? So anyway, I loved all of the pieces we did today. I'm going to close this out and do the outro. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that selection of rugs this time. I'll be doing another episode in a little while, but I just love what we did today. There was there were so many great examples. We're doing less rugs and talking more about each one, and I personally like that format better. But we did everything from the mug rugs to the sugar skulls to the blue nose pattern and that little search, finding out more about blue nose and the way that those patterns were saved. Um, Kathy Hopper's primitive um, vase with flowers and also the Frida Kahlo that's getting started. And um, Trisha Miller's beautiful scrap rug with the squirrels and the patchwork diamonds in the center. The Winter Cottage Studio um, designed with Jack's Crow. It was done with that beautiful blue sky with the reversible fabric. The poinsettias, um, the Alita Acres piece um, that Barb did that was had the crows. And everything was beautiful tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. It's so nice to look at things together. And please leave comments, whether it's on the Facebook page. Uh, my Facebook page is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. You're welcome to post on there. Tag me if you want me to uh, show something to, to a slightly different group when I make these videos. Uh, feel free to comment and like and subscribe and all that stuff on YouTube. That's really important for me to be able to know you're there and for the powers that be to know that you're watching. It's real important. But make comments, especially if you know the answers to things like, oh, you know, I've seen this here or sold this here or this place is still open or you can find these designs in another place. Let's help each other out as much as we can because we all love looking at rugs, making rugs, thinking about making rugs, working up the nerve to make rugs. All of these things, we need to work together and share our information so that we can all be successful or at least all be inspired. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll have another one of these episodes soon. And in the meantime, you can see me uh, every weekday on Coffee Time on Ribbon Candy Hooking here. Uh, between 11.30 and noon Eastern Standard Time. See you soon.